Hello everyone and welcome back. This is the Losers Round 3 matchup between Scotty and Admiral Price. This is Scotty's map choice and what a good choice it was as we are a forest goalie, one of my favorite maps. And he is here in the blue. Admiral Price on the other side in the red trying to pull out a rare victory for the Mori. And for the armies, pretty interesting. Scotty is bringing a very similar map, uh, un unit composition, what he used on the last map. But this time it's five Katana Samurai and one Nodachi. He's going a little heavier on the Katanas, maybe thinking he can live up to Admiral Price's micro and maybe just ba banking on having another grinded out victory like he could have had in the last one. He just held out a little longer. Admiral Price, interestingly, is bringing a Naginata core, which I always love to see. Tons of Naginata Samurai, a couple monks, and some bow support. Only a couple cavalry. We see two light cavalry here, but surely there's some crabbing off here in the trees. He has the two detachments of matchlocks as well on the wings, like we saw in the last game. Scotty here is going to be dismounting, and each side is going to take their building early on. Scotty will get the shrine for the morale bonus, and Admiral Price will get the workshop for the defensive bonus. And it looks like Admiral Price is going to steal the farmhouse here in the very middle. Now this is such a great map for skirmishing. I'm a little surprised to see that Scotty didn't bring any bows, but I can't really remember him using bows throughout this tournament, so he just might not be the missile kind of guy. He does have his match lock up here, so we'll see what kind of skirmishing he can go and do, because it's going to be very dangerous attacking a Naginata core on this map, without any bows, because Admiral Price is going to have a big skirmishing advantage. And that's probably why he brought the Naginatas on this map, knowing that it's a skirmish-heavy map. Maybe he brought those Naginata Samurai, because they have the higher armor, and withstand bows quite well. But it's not going to be a big deal, because Gotti simply doesn't have any bows. One matchlock moving up, interestingly, going over to the ridge here. This is, on this map, like I say, bows are really good on it, and this is one reason why. This ridge right here, overlooking the buildings on each side, you can just place a bow unit right here and just control that building and make sure they don't capture. But a matchlock's not going to have enough range. Maybe if he pops the extended range, he might be able to hit it, uh, but I highly doubt it. So no bows there. I mean, Admiral Price is going to be able to take that building unmolested, and he does get the farmhouse as well up here in the middle. So the onus is on Scotty to attack here, so Admiral Price could take a defensive formation, or he could walk up and try and skirmish as well as he could. Even the matchlocks, without any bows to threaten them, could do some skirmishing as well. But that's a lot of cavalry for Scotty. Not too much for Admiral Price. We see two more came out, but just like cavalry, four of them. Maybe just trying to block charges here and grind out a victory. His Nagana Samurai are really good. They're just tanks that can just grind it out for ages and do a decent amount of damage as well. Yari Samurai actually have a little higher defense than Naginatas, I believe. And they actually do tend to withstand attacks a little longer than Naginatas. But the attack side of Naginatas makes them a little better for uh, being a mainline infantry than Yari's. And look at this. Being very aggressive, knowing that he has a skirmish disadvantage, sending a Katana Cavalry right into the Bow Monks, trying to capitalize early. But a Light Cavalry here is going to come up as well to hit that uh, Katana Cavalry, and might have just been a diversion because Scotty's moving up and has popped his rally, so it looks like he's going in right now and just trying to neutralize that Bow advantage. But he's in danger of being flanked over here by this detachment of Matchlocks. Already some wavering here. Admiral Price is spread a lot thinner than Scotty is. So he could really work that morale to his advantage. Just gonna looks like he's gonna ignore the matchlocks, running into light cavalry. Probably a good idea. Big cavalry advantage, meaning he could just roll right through these light cavalry, and then Admiral Price will have nothing. And oh, look at this! Scotty has a great engagement going off here. His infantry is uh, pinning down Admiral Price's, and he pinned down enough of the cavalry that he's gonna be able to walk this great guard right into the rear, and they don't get a good charge off. But he's this did, general's right here in huge danger, and a bow bow warrior monk. So this is, oh, and Admiral Price is just really disorganized right now, and he's going to lose this chunk up here if he's not careful. Nodachi must have done a good job, and they managed to stay in the fight with about 37 men. Naginata monks are moving up as well, and Admiral Price is in disarray, and Scotty, a very masterful attack here. I'm very impressed. It was very well done. He had a lot of disadvantages on the bow side. Could have took, taken a lot more damage if he wasn't careful, but manages to really just pull off a great attack here, and Admiral Price is in big trouble. This whole flank has collapsed for Admiral Price. Another cavalry unit is coming around. Looks like he's going to try and hit the, mo the bow monks again, just does not want to take any bow damage, and the light cavalry is cleaned up off the field. Unfortunately for Scotty, those matchlocks are really torn into his cavalry, but one unit of great guards is going to be able to come in here and hit the general with a big charge at the crucial moment. And Scotty does a great job on this, this matchup right here. Didn't kill anybody in the charge, but they will surely be cleaned up by that great guard. His other Yardi Cavalry is now moving around and getting a good charge into the rear of this huge chunk right here. Look at that mass wavering on Admiral Price's side and Scotty getting it done on Forest Goalie. It's actually a hard map to attack on, but just really shows us how it's done and done a great job. But the battle's not over yet. I shouldn't be talking. 
in those sort of turns because there's still plenty of monks and samurai left for Admiral Price, but his general is gone, so it is not looking good for him at all. Scotty's general's lost three men, but still in the fight. The matchlocks are too far away to make any difference as well on that side, but this one, they're going to have to run uphill, right, at these matchlocks. It's not a good place to be running at matchlocks, but the Naginata monks might get in the way here, and they might not be able to get too many good shots off before they are engaged in melee, and what's left of the center here is just pretty much gone, getting overwhelmed. Naginata Samurai doing a good job of holding they are the tank unit in this game, but they are going to get routed eventually. Naginata monks are being overwhelmed as well, and the Katana Samurai is coming to hold down the Matchlock Samurai again to stop shooting, but the Matchlocks for Scotty have come into the battle as well, and just shooting into their own men as well, just trying to get those monks off the field and clean up this battle as soon as possible. And if Admiral Price could have held out a little longer, maybe would have had a chance to win this, uh, to win at this point, because there's not a whole lot left for Scotty either. But unfortunately for this Naginata Monk, he's going to be right in the field of fire of the Matchlocks. No way they're getting out of that alive. Oh, nice volley there, killing about 10 men. They're wavering. Oh, down to 40 men now. Oh, just tearing this unit apart. 34. They will be gone. They will not reach that Matchlock Samurai before they're off the field. But they're sure as hell going to try. At 29 men and wavering, 28. Very brave here. A little bit of a moral victory for Admiral Price. If this and they're steady now going into the Matchlock Samurai. And they do make it. Wow. But Scotty, and actually, it was a little closer than it looked there, but Scotty is going to take this game with one unit left for Admiral Price. Just got to seal the deal here. And there it is. Scotty's taking game two, which means we're going to the first tiebreaker of this round. And with the new rules, it'd be interesting to see what map gets chosen. I will see you there. But first, go back to the main menu for a little bit of post-game commentary. And Scotty just was not shaken at all by that loss in game one because he had a very good controlled attack there on a map that's a little hard to attack on especially if you don't have any bows but he sure as heck did it his timing was just so good with the cavalry going there distracting the bows and then just took his advantage right when he saw it it was the perfect time to attack because those bows just could not respond when they were being hounded by cavalry using his cavalry there and just bowl over admiral price as having only light cavalry he knew he could win that cavalry engagement unfortunately he didn't tie down those match locks so they did just just tear the cavalry that was killing the light cavalry apart, but ended up working out for him. Opened up so many holes with this cavalry micro there, and just did a great job of attacking. I really got to take my hat off to him there. Great job by Scotty. And we're going into game three, and these two great players will be fighting for their lives. Admiral Price fighting for the honor of the Mori, and Scotty fighting for the honor of taking out one of the favorites in this tournament. We'll see how it goes. I will see you there. Thanks for watching, everybody.